My guest today is Felix Rieseberg. Felix, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Am I saying your name correctly? Yeah, absolutely. That is uh, actually a very rare feat. Not you're many people are doing that, but... You're German, right? I am. I am born and raised. And where do you live now? San Francisco. Um, I'm, I moved to San Francisco. The weather certainly is way better over there. And I happen to know you have an awesome job because it's similar to the job that I have, and my job is awesome. Exactly. What so um, I'm a Microsoft startup develop evangelist, and uh, in my day-to-day -day job, I, I always used to say that I help young companies to not kill themselves while trying to build something new. Those. Speaking of killing them, <laughs> killing. <laughs> uh, you, I, I saw your Amazing game. Segment. You have a very popular game in the Windows 8 store. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Called uh, Awesome Zombie Sniper. Exactly. I can only urge everyone to download it. Um, <laughs> It's, it's, it's a fun project because um, so at Microsoft we have this thing where we are supposed to keep learning, right? And so every time we try something new. And about half a year ago, um, my, my manager decided that I should really get into game development. And I, quite frankly, mm -hmm. didn't really know how to do that. I'm a web stack developer by home. Okay. Right? I'm doing so you've never built games before? No, and no. Did I've did back you, in were you a gamer? Do you play games? I do play games occasionally. And back in the back in the day, um, with Half Life One, which I think came out in 1995. Okay, that's maybe? one of the strategy games, right? No, no, no. That was one of the first. That was basically the the uh, first first person shooter that oh. had a major story, and also essentially founded Valve, right? Which is we're currently in Seattle, just right on the road with okay. uh, Steam and Counter Strike. Okay, and can, I'm actually not a gamer, yeah. so I'm. Uh, uh, well, not anyway, not, but I, I, I have gamers living in my house, so I, I think oh, okay. Well, I used to I used to build some levels for that game when I was a kid. Oh, okay. Right, but ever, ever since then, I was mostly doing things that actually, <laughs> in my mind, generated easier money, which was uh, web stack development, right? Sure. Just IT admin stuff. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk about the process of building a game. What uh, what tool did you use? Uh, Unity 3D, which okay. is, in my opinion, currently not only the best game engine. I checked a couple of them out, but also the most popular one, which is what made the vote easy. There are a couple of major companies out there that give out amazing voter conferences. Um, Microsoft Studios is one of them. Blizzard, the company behind World of Warcraft, mm -hmm. has apparently ditched their own engine in favor of Unity. Oh, they're going to rewrite World of Warcraft and Unity? Uh, they're not going to do that. I think World of Warcraft is pretty much done at this point, but their next title is going to be written in uh, Unity, the next big oh, intellectual property. And then you have all world, the big World names. of Peacecraft, probably. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. That would be, that would be great. <laughs> um, magic for peace. And then all the other big names, right? Like Rovio with Angry Birds and uh, Electronic Arts with Call of Duty and all those. So whenever it runs on multiple platforms um, and it's not the really the the big game that is supposed to run on console, but more mm -hmm. the casual game that is supposed to run on many platforms, it's probably Unity these days. Interesting. I mean, I, you said Angry Birds and then... Uh, Electronic Arts. Angry Birds is very different than the games I've seen in Electronic Arts, which uh, I, I think of the uh, the sports games and real 3D and first-person yeah. perspective. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So um, uh, with all those companies, it seems to be a development that is either slow, but it's certainly going into the direction of Unity. So the original Angry Birds was apparently not made in, in Unity, but mm. um, all the kinds of cover titles. Um, there's apparently a title called uh, Angry Birds Bad Piggies, which I personally never played. Mm. But um, it's the follow-up to Angry Birds. Um, that one is built in Unity. Bottom line is that people people start started using Unity for all kinds of different reasons, right? Not only because of the 3D engine, you can also do 2D. Pretty much as long as you can think about a game, you can probably build it in Unity. And uh, what, what, what the amazing thing about it is you can use C Sharp, you can use open, open source.net. Hmm. Um, it's very straightforward. It runs on every single platform. Um, and most importantly, Unity is so inexpensive, right? There's a free version that allows you to publish, completely oh, okay. free. All right, that's, and even that's very expensive, <laughs> right? And even if you do want to go, even if you do want to go with the professional AA title version, that is still at this rate, it's currently seventy-five dollars a month, or hmm. fifteen hundred for the full license. I see. Um, whereas other engines, for instance, the Unreal Engine is. Uh, I think, if, let me see if I remember the terms correctly, but I think it's um, if you make more than 50K in revenue, um, they demand a cut that is somewhere between 20 and 30%. I forgot the exact number. Oh, so they give the software away free. They just want a piece of your business. Yes, but a substantial one, right? right. And they, they right. take the uh, pre-App Store cut. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, it's it's Unity is by far, by far cheaper than many of the other engines out there. Tell me about the experience of developing with Unity. You said you write code with it? Yes. 
yeah. um, is it is it basically file new and then start typing C sharp or no, is it more drag and drop or what's the not exactly you kind of have to do both so basically if you if you think about game development um, it works a bit different than the event driven development we all know right usually we're known to putting a button somewhere, putting an event handler on it, and then we do whatever logic we want to do. Mm -hmm. Unity is more putting you in, in the position of, um, I, keep, I keep telling that people, but more in the position of a movie director. Okay. Because they have scenes, they have cameras, they have light sources, they have objects. And what you do is you set up your scene in a very much drag and drop environment, it's three dimensional. Mm -hmm. You set up your scene, and you literally have camera objects that represent what the player sees. That's and you the have perspective of the player. Exactly, and you have light sources. And what you do is you attach scripting to whatever agent you want to attach a script to. Mm. So let's take your camera, right? Let's say you want to move the camera. What you do is you attach a script to the camera, and then you open up code window, and then you um, don't necessarily write an event handler. What you do write is a function that is being run every single frame. Okay inside a game loop. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, and that, and that function can be written in C-sharp or another language. Exactly, so um, it is Mono. Um, Mono is essentially at this point um, an open source implementation of .NET, so you right. do find systems.collections and um, many other things that you're used to from the classic old .NET. Yeah, and it runs on multiple platforms as well. It does, it does. Um, so the beautiful part is that the compiler runs on all kinds of platforms. Um, Unity itself runs on literally anywhere, iOS, Android, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Blackberry, uh, PlayStation Vita, PlayStation 3, Wii U, okay. the list goes on. Wow. Uh, so we're Microsoft guys, so what's what's the process of getting it onto Windows 8? Is it, does it just, you, you build your game and then you're, it's, it runs, or is there a, a compile step after that? Uh, there is another compile step after that, which is which is pretty amazing. It's um, the, the most important part is that it's free. I guess that's pretty cool, um, because for some of those platforms, if you do want to go with a professional license, this is what makes the licensing a bit difficult. If you want to go with a professional license... Professional license of Unity? Yes. Okay. So if you want to use some of the fancy features, like, mm. I don't know, fancy shadows, or who knows what, mm. um, you have to pay an extra amount for each platform that you're targeting. For instance, 1500 mm. for iOS, another oh, 1500 wow. for Android. And in the case of Windows, so Windows Phone and Windows Store, Microsoft is paying for that license. Mm, so okay. it's completely free, available to right. the community. Uh, which is pretty amazing, but essentially what you do is, once you hit build inside Unity, it's giving you a ready-made Visual Studio project. If you mm. open that up, you have to, you need to open up a Visual Studio, um, and then you just need to hit, hit compile there. Um, you can completely automate the process. Oh, okay, I see. So, for so instance, so for it'll create an SLN file and a CS proj file that's exactly. inside of there, and then a bunch of uh, C sharp classes. Or is it C sharp or is it uh, HTML5? JavaScript? It is C sharp. Okay. It is C sharp. Um, you can also do C++ if okay. you want to, um, but it's usually C-sharp. Mm -hmm. And um, that would be the case for Windows 8. For Windows Phone, it's essentially the same with the only exception that Unity can also compile the whole executable for you, um, leaving out that one mouse click that you need for Windows 8. But it's essentially a two-minute process. Interesting. Well, there is, there is one thing that is, that is usually interesting to Microsoft people, and that is, um, that is discrepancy between Mono and whatever we have now on WinRT. That okay. is a bit difficult because the surprising and that is actually that actually makes Windows Store and Windows Phone publication a bit more tricky than some of the other platforms. Hmm. Because if you go with if you go with Windows, here are two things that happen. You compile once using Mono in Unity, and then you get basically your Unity executable, and then you have to compile that again. Now, if you have things inside Mono like a hash table, those have been deprecated in the past by Microsoft, right? I see. For various reasons. For instance, why a hash table is not very performant or very valid reasons to remove those types. Um, however, they're still in the, source, in the source code. That's only if you've coded that, right? Or yes. are they yeah. is that no, generated? No, no, no. That is only that is only if you used it. But okay. um, some people, it's available inside Unity, right. and some people use so it. So if you know you're going to use Windows 8, you probably should not be using deprecated functionality. Exactly, exactly. If you are using Windows 8, you should make sure that whatever you use is supported by Windows WinRT. Mm. Um, but that's that's really the only thing people have to think about. Okay. Now I saw your game, and it looks real. It's a beautiful game. If you, I mean, if you find zombies beautiful. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Does that? Are you an artist? No, no. I um, I bought every single thing inside the game. You bought? Um, oh, you bought the zombies. You bought the rocks and the trees. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm a developer myself. I don't really. I now do use Photoshop. I once built a 3D object myself, but usually I'm pretty bad at it. Hmm. Um, I'm a tournament code. The, the nice thing about Unity and the whole economy right now is that the whole internet seems to be set up to support people that want to build something and don't have a lot of money, right? The whole sharing economy is pretty mm -hmm. amazing right now. 
and um, that also that also works on the prices that you find for objects. And Unity itself has an asset store that kind of looks like an app store for anything you could potentially use to build your game. Mm, okay. And the prices in there are amazing. Um, in, in a demonstration that I said a couple of days ago, I showed uh, the set of 11 beautiful characters that seem to coming seem to be coming out of a Indiana Jones movie. Right? Indiana you have yeah. your old professor, your World War One general, uh, the beautiful <laughs> lady, the adventurer, and right. the female adventurer. The typical characters, right? right. And that set, al that set alone is ten dollars, including animations, which is less than a dollar per character. Which wow. Is it's pretty amazing, right? So in my case, my total investment um, was below four hundred dollars, maybe okay. even three hundred. I was certainly below. So you 400. bought the game engine for free, and you bought the the characters, the yeah. zombies, the yeah. shoot, the guns, the the landscape objects. Exactly, exactly. My return was, my return still is about two thousand a month, right? So. Yeah. Uh, so oh, you're making that on your game. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? Are you selling it? Uh, the game is free. I very strongly believe that if you have a game, you should make it available for free. Mm. Um, but there is an advertising banner that is being displayed sometimes when you have internet connection between loading scenes. Mm, so okay. um, as soon as you load the game, while the game is loading in the background, it will also show you a banner while you just wait for your game to shoot. To, I like to that concept. I, I, it doesn't get in the way of the game. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't, I don't really... Certainly for me, that is successful. I'm very honest about what the game is the game is about so if you download it um, and go into credits I'm basically telling you the whole story that this is my moonlighting project this is not professional I'm alone if you have any ideas for improvements shoot me email mm -hmm. and um, people people love that right people love the idea of me building my game for them to enjoy and right it's it are you getting feedback from the community so much yeah. it's unbelievable okay about and are five you incorporating that into new versions as good as I can as good yeah. as I can some <laughs> people some people are very creative and have amazing ideas with things that I wouldn't really know how to implement properly without right. not also requiring a ton of performance on the computer side. Mm. Um, but getting feedback is probably one of the most fun parts about it. Like getting those nice mail. People sit down and send you mails telling you how much they enjoyed the game, which which things they enjoyed the most, where they found errors, where they found bugs. Mm. Extremely nice. That's Extremely that is nice, nice to have a community build around something you built. Yeah. Uh, how do people get started then? If uh, somebody's watching the show and they say that sounds awesome, with I want to build a game with Unity. Uh, I would recommend just going to Unity's homepage. Just type Unity into any any given search engine you can find. Bing, for instance, Bing. And um, then on the right of the website of Unity3D.com, you will find the download button. You literally click that, download Unity. As soon as you open up Unity, it will offer you um, it will offer you that you can run the whole thing for free. Okay. Whether or not you want to test the professional version for 30 days, but whatever you go with, you can essentially build right away and on the same website there's also this learn button and as soon as you hit that you can very easily um, follow one of the tutorials they even have very elaborate tutorials where you can build whole games mm. and um, those are really really good quick starts and I assume that many people who follow your your podcast um, probably already do have some affinity technology right? Maybe they, have, some they certainly have internet access <laughs> yeah yeah and um, unity is extremely open right so we were talking about C sharp but you can also code in uh, Unity Script, which is essentially JavaScript, mm -hmm. as well as Boo, which no one does. But if mm -hmm. you feel so inclined to code in Boo, that is also open and available to you. Okay, and, and Unity will run on a PC and it'll run on a Mac and it'll run on another yeah, system. Yeah, pretty as well. much. If uh, you have something the, the that has a flickering right. screen, it's gonna run <laughs> Unity. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have an online presence? Yes, I do. Uh, FelixRiesberg.com. Oh, wait, 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 wait. More important, SnipeZombies.com. Snipe zombies. All right. I couldn't believe that that domain was still free, by the way. <laughs> Felix, thanks a lot. David, thank you so much. If you enjoy technology in any way, and you once enjoyed a game in your life, but I'm pretty sure you have, I really, really urge you to go ahead, download Unity, download anything that builds games. There are many frameworks out there, and just go ahead and try it out and build something. Um, your friends are going to enjoy it. Everyone else is going to enjoy it. And more importantly, you are going to enjoy it. Building a game is so much fun.